Welcome back, friends. So before we get into today's video, I have to apologize. And I'm very sorry that these videos have been coming out kind of sporadically. See, what happened was we moved and I'm having to set up an entire new garage. All of this is brand new. I'm missing tools and I'm missing some stuff to do this. So uh, it's taken me a little time and I really apologize that these videos aren't coming out correctly. Now, with that, we're gonna take a step back from redoing the lift kit on my Jeep. Um, rest assured, all those videos will come out in a timely manner and I'm going to get back into it and I've not done a single step without you guys. Uh, but there's one big thing we got to take care of and that is the Jeep will not fit in the garage currently. That's simply due to the roof rack on the Jeep. This garage is shorter height wise and so we need to get it in here so I can work on it. But this also lends a hand to something new is that we can redo our entire camp setup with not using a roof rack. So this video, we're gonna do pros and cons of a roof rack on your vehicle. Uh, and I'm gonna go over some pros and cons that are specifically tailored to Jeeps, but then also some that are just general that you need to think about if you're looking at putting a heavy duty roof rack on your vehicle and why, may, why you may or may not want to do that. So with that, let's go ahead, let's get everything off the roof rack, get it off the vehicle, bring it in here, and then we'll have a little discussion about it. Yep. Before we can do anything, we gotta get all these wires off. Which means also we gotta deal with something with our solar too. All that has to go. But I have some unique ideas on what we can do with the solar. I'm not too worried about it. Though I will say, yeah, I'm a little upset about the about losing the roof rack for the solar because I really do like the solar panel on there. It's been really amazing to have it on the Jeep. Really good for running the fridge and all the camera gear and everything. If you guys are thinking about putting solar on your rig, uh, let me sum it up. Just do it. You'll really like it. Another thing I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna find a place to put all my antennas because uh, obviously I don't have a roof rack to mount them anymore. It's been kind of a crutch though, to be honest. Having a roof rack to mount stuff is, it just makes things way easier. You don't have to really think about where anything is going or what to do. It just kind of works. But y'all be honest, that is, it's, it's cheating. <laughs> It is cheating. Uh, ignore my uh, crusted wrench here, it's a little overkill. I don't have much in the way of tools at the moment, so we're, we're making do with what we have. And that's okay. But, while we're on the subject of making do with what we have, you can do a lot with a little, and if you guys would like to see how I'm setting up a tiny shop, tiny garage to, well, not only film, but to do, uh, to build vehicles, let me know. We'll go over all the process of what I'm doing and my thought process and everything. It might be an interesting video, you guys might like that. Because I'm finding out, and I don't know everything, but I'm finding out, it is really hard to build a competent shop in a very small space. So, but if I can do it in this garage, you guys can do it in almost anything. I apologize for the jet noise. They're doing a lot of flying today. All right, so one of the things I'm proud of with this roof rack when I did build it is I did everything so that it had connectors in case something broke or I had to disconnect something. Uh, like case in point, let's say this panel broke. Well, I could easily unplug it like this and replace the plant panel and not have to worry about it. Jeez. I'll tell you one thing though, it'll be really interesting not having a roof rack. I've had this rack on my Jeep for so long. Uh, 
I don't really know what it's like not having it anymore. Uh oh, where'd that go? There it is. So, that'll be a very interesting deal for me. One of the downsides to a roof rack that's quite obvious is the height it adds or the, uh, the weight it adds to the roof. Now, some of your other vehicles like the newer Jeeps where you could put the lightweight roof rack right on the top or the, uh, let's say like a 4Runner or something. What's nice about those roof racks is they don't really add, they don't really add a whole lot of like weight to your roof. Whereas this thing right here, this thing is a beast. This thing adds a lot of weight to your to your roof or uh, your center of gravity, mind you. I mean, I'm gonna estimate that the rack right here, after I've added all these bars into, is probably a hundred pounds or more. And as you can imagine, a hundred pounds or more to the top of a Jeep is not is not the best. Uh, our last trip. If you haven't seen the video, I'll put a link to it. But basically our last trip, our big trip on Coyote Flats, Helen was driving and she got a little nervous on some side hills. And it was mainly because, uh, well, we were a little leany. We had a lot of weight up high. We were lifted more than we are now. And adding all that weight up here uh, makes for an interesting driving experience off road to say the least. So honestly, I'm kind of excited to get some of this weight off the roof. Uh, it'll turn the vehicle back to what it was when I started building it for rock crawling. More lightweight, a little bit more nimble, a little less noise on the roof, coming from the roof. This rack isn't actually bad with the noise, but uh, you know, less is always better in my opinion anyway. All right, that's loose. Now we just need to lift it off. So let's just walk it back and then we get to about here. When the front, when we get the front to the back of the Jeep, the front of the rack to the back of the Jeep, then what we'll do is one of us will go to the back and hold it and then grab the front off. Ready? Yeah. Just let it slide on there. I know it's heavy. Ready? Oh, hold on, hold on. It's heavier since you put those bars in. Yeah, I know. Uh oh. Okay. Ready? Hold on, hold on. Now, do you want to hold this right here, or do you want me to get, or do you want to get the front? I can get this better. Okay. Why don't you hold this? Okay, I got it. Set it down now. That wasn't too bad. I just want to see if it'll, we'll just get close to it. If those will clear, then I'll take those off inside the garage. That's so it's four. Four inches? Almost four and a half. So if I build a roof rack that's only one inch tall, it would fit. Okay. I'll take the bars off that. The top bars don't come off, they're welded. I'd have to cut it. I mean cut that one and then put the bar down. It's already made. It already bolts in. All right, so the roof rack is off the Jeep and surprisingly it actually fit in the garage really well. I was a bit worried that we're gonna have less space to be honest. But let's go over some pros and cons of putting a roof rack on your vehicle um, and taking it off or not having one. Like obviously a pro is you can fit it in a garage easier, right? So that's one of the main reasons that I did it. But some pros, storage space, lots of storage space. You basically triple the amount of storage space. In something like a TJ or a Jeep, you have, you know, 
this much space in the back, whatever that is, you have that much space. And if you put a roof rack, you get the whole length of the vehicle in space. So you get a lot of extra storage space. Not only that, but allows you to add accessories a lot easier. Example, uh, let's talk about CB or ham radio antennas. Well, instead of trying to find an awkward spot on the body to mount them, especially on a Jeep where you have a fiberglass top, you can't really mount an antenna to a fiberglass top, uh, you now have bar work you can mount them to and it's simply as bolting some clamps on. It becomes very, very simple and then you can place the antennas wherever you want. Okay, well that's cool. The other thing you can do is you can mount rooftop tents if you wanted to. Rooftop tents should have a built roof rack. Your standard crossbars might work when you're going down the road, but really they're not designed for that weight. You really need to put a roof rack on if you're going to uh, put a rooftop tent. They're just too heavy. Uh, so you could carry stuff like that. You could put uh, awnings, right? I built my own. If you haven't seen that, I'll throw a link up here, but you could put awnings off the side of your roof rack. Uh, firewood is a good option because it keeps the wood, well, out of the inside of your vehicle. And that goes back into storage. And there's a lot of things you can do with the roof racks that are really good. What about uh, in off camber situations where you need a little more ballast? Have, I've had to do that on this. Uh, it's easy for someone to grab the roof rack and hold onto the side of the vehicle and give you a little weight off the side to balance you out a little bit if in case you're uh, feeling a little too tippy. So th those are all just a few pros that you get to roof racks. Obviously the storage, storage is the biggest one, but it gives you a lot of flexibility in your vehicle. However, with that flexibility in storage, you lose in a lot of other areas. One being your off-road capability. Now this is gonna be an argument, but here's the reality of it. Every time you add a pound above your roof line or above the center line of your vehicle, you are losing, you are increasing your uh, center of gravity. That's a bad thing typically. Now, going down the highway, going down dirt roads, you probably won't notice it, but as soon as you start getting into a little bit of off-camber situation, you're gonna feel it, and you're gonna feel it in a big way. This is why I'm not a fan of rooftop tents on a smaller vehicle like a TJ. Maybe something bigger like a Land Cruiser won't notice it because they have the weight to help compensate, but I promise you, you put 150 pounds on that roof, you're gonna know it, or more. Like me, I put more up there because I had fuel and everything else up there. Um, you're gonna notice it. So one con is your off-road capability. Um, you're gonna notice that there's extra weight up there and you're gonna lose a little bit. It's not gonna be as comfortable. The other one is, obviously, you can't fit in areas as easily. Now, going through trees and stuff doesn't matter. Um, honestly, I've smashed that rack into so many tree branches and stuff going through that it really doesn't matter. That's not an argument here, but going into something like parking garages, basically not possible. Getting into a garage, depending on the garage height possible, clearly not in mine. Uh, so that's a big concern depending on how you want to park your vehicle um, and where you have to park it. A roof rack may or may not be for you. With that said, there's a caveat there. TJs and probably JKs um, out of all the vehicles that you could overland with are very unique in this case because you have to have bar work supporting the rack, right? Probably even a JL2 if you don't get a light rate rack. So you have to have all this bar work, which increases weight, which also makes the roof rack right above the roof um, and just makes everything taller and a little heavier. They do make lower profile racks for newer vehicles, Tacomas, 4Runners, the JL has a really cool one uh, where it's kind of back from the front, which is helps for aerodynamics, but also it's very low profile. It's got a weight limit of like 150 pounds, so you probably wouldn't put a roof rack on or a rooftop tent on it, but you could definitely store a lot of gear with that 150 pounds. But it's nice because it's low profile, and that's key, right? That takes away part of that con of not being able to fit into garages or wherever you need to go because you're very low profile. However, Remember, you are still adding weight to the top of the vehicle. The other thing you have to consider is noise. Now, this roof rack from Garvin didn't add too much noise. It made noise, I'm not gonna lie, but it wasn't unbearable. It didn't add very much just because the way it's designed. Um, there are roof racks that add a whole lot more. I used to have a Smitty Belt rack on here at one point with just like the round tubes, and that was awful. That was really noisy, you couldn't even stand it. Uh, that came off very quickly. Uh, so the design of the rack is gonna help a lot. Also, the low profile racks, I would imagine make very little noise because of where they're positioned and they pay more attention to what the noise is gonna be when they're designing them now. And the newer vehicles can take weight on the roof, whereas like my TJ, for example, really cannot. The fiberglass top is just really not designed to handle weight. The new ones are. So there's that. You have to, design, you have to figure that out based on what vehicle you have and how much weight you're gonna carry. Now, with all that said, Aerodynamics is another thing. So 
Will you pick up fuel mileage by removing a rack or will you lose fuel mileage by adding a rack? You're probably going to lose some fuel mileage, some uh, MPGs by adding a roof rack, depending on the rack. A low profile rack, you may not notice at all. My rack, I lost about one to two miles a gallon and something like a TJ, that's a big deal because it doesn't get much to begin with. Now, a lot of you will have the argument, well, it's an off-road rig, it's a Jeep, don't worry about it. It's just, you know, it's mileage, you lose it. That's true, but every mileage, every time you gain a little bit of mileage helps you go on more adventures, helps you reach farther into the wilderness without having to uh, fill up as often or carry as much fuel with you. Um, it's just better if you can get more range out of your vehicle. So that's gonna be a con, and uh, we've already been on learning the noise. <laughs> Let me tell you about the noise. You probably won't notice it going down the highway, but in my rack specifically, if we've got a side gust or a gust from like the corner, wind coming in, you would definitely hear it then. Going down the highway normally, it was pretty quiet, but if wind hit it at certain angles, it got pretty loud and you knew it. So there is that. Plus when you start stacking weight up high, like going down the highway, if you get a side gust, you're gonna feel it. I did a lot of work on my Jeep to make sure we don't, uh, tightening up the, the, the um, the sway bars, making sure the suspension is really tight and really, really solid. That did a lot in ensuring that if we did get hit with a side gust, a pretty big one, um, the vehicle would be able to handle it. And out here in the desert that we're living in, it's not uncommon for us to get 60, 70 mile an hour gusts. They do happen. We can have sustained winds of 40 to 50 miles an hour easily. We've even been known to have 100 mile an hour gusts come through. So. Um, have, being able to handle that, just know your vehicle's limitations, know what you wanna do with it, and know what you're willing to put up with. And then if you're gonna put weight on the roof like that, know that you're probably gonna to have to do something to the suspension to be able to handle that. So with all that said, I think it's time to end the video. That's it when it comes to pros and cons. There's probably a few more that you could think of, um, expense and all that stuff, but if you're looking at roof racks, you are probably ready to um, drop the money on it. Just know there are some cons, and some you can live with, some you can't. You do have to be careful how much weight you're adding to the roof. I, want, I can't stress that more than enough. When you're adding a roof rack, you can't just go piling on as much as you want. Uh, been there, done it, right? I used to carry almost 10 gallons of fuel on the roof and firewood and everything I could put, I would throw up there. And we found out very quickly that uh, going off road and going down the highway, that becomes a very awful experience, especially in a TJ. So there's that. Anyway, so. That's about it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. The next series of videos are going to be working on this thing and getting the lift kit all sorted out and uh, showing you how to do alignments and all that stuff. And then we'll do a final test drive and uh, go on a trip or something when it's all done. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you sticking with me. Uh, I Please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. It helps me make these videos. And uh, I really enjoy seeing the comments. Hit those comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any ideas or uh, just thoughts about, uh, I don't know, what we talked about in this video. So with that, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next video.